There are bars all around. The concern is people can be walking out drunk, maybe even a little daring. Bottom line, at least right here, there is absolutely nothing stopping you from getting hit. And the judge said this was one of the most senseless and disturbing killings this court has ever seen. We've all heard the saying, there's an app for that. And this time, it may be true. Find My iPhone led two men here to Torrey Pines State Reserve and what started as a mission to find an iPhone quickly escalated to throwing punches and spraying pepper spray. Hannah Mullins joins me now. And Hannah, oh boy, fans from all over the place were enjoying the action tonight. They certainly were. And I'll tell you what, for folks from Flagstaff, hosting the Cardinals is a huge sense of pride. Watching them tonight boosted a lot of spirits. Good morning, Koshal. If you take a look at just how high up the second story is, it's really hard to imagine being so scared you think your safest option is to jump out of a burning building. And a woman was walking down this alley when a pit bull ripped right through this metal fence. Linzu, high school is hard enough. Now, name calling usually comes from the kids, but this could be a case of a teacher talking trash. Pinecone here made the trip from New York, and she seems to be settling in just fine. Now she just sits in here and waits for her forever home and her forever person to lean on. It was a semi-automatic shotgun like this that nearly claimed the lives of two deputies. And guys, we saw a dad reach for his kids through the bus window and a wife who's afraid she'll forget what her husband smells like, and that's because this last deployment is one of the longest. I just really don't want to go. <laughs> It was the first of many days the 140 Marines and sailors won't be able to wipe the tears away. I love my dad very much. He means all of me. Um, I really love him so much. I just don't want to go. After 28 years in the Marine Corps, Colonel Grady Bellew knew he had to. They loaded up for their deployment to Helmand and Nimroz provinces, where they'll work with Afghan National Security Forces. You know, it's been a continuous churn, continuous churn for both of us. This was the last time the Marine Corps' West Coast Air Wing had command in Afghanistan. This air support in 2012 followed a deadly attack on U.S. forces. In 2013, the East Coast Air Wing took control, and now it's 2014, and it's time for Pendleton Marines to relieve them. As we've been in the war for a long time, this nation has, so, and I think, you know, we are tired. It's like the nation is tired. Uh, I think uh, our families uh, are, are, are a little bit tired too uh, of the concept of going. So it's, it's, it's time. His wife of 12 years thinks it's time too. She doesn't want to sleep with his shirt at night without washing it, but she will just to feel a little closer. I love him and I don't want him to go. I pray that he returns home safely. As the last of them loaded onto the bus, this little girl was able to sneak one last kiss and in return, she offered a sweet promise. You look after mommy. You look after mommy. Lindsay will too. She's 10, but says she's 11 because she celebrated her birthday with her dad. He should be back in time for her 12th birthday. In fact, all the troops should be back from Afghanistan. They should be home at the end of 2014. We wish them all a safe return. Hannah Mullins, 10 News. <laughs> A couple years back, Coco and Max found each other. I got him off the streets here. Now they coast through San Diego as a team. Coco hates to think what his life would be like without the one thing he has left. Well, it'd be, I wouldn't have anybody to talk to. And uh, it'd be more depressing. <laughs> He brightened me up a whole lot. John Van Zanti of Rancho Coastal Humane Society believes more than 10% of San Diego's homeless population has pets. There's a guy that I see in Balboa Park that his dog eats before he does. Regardless of anything else that may be going on, they have the same heart connection with their pet that I do with mine. It's part of why they're opening a pet food bank for the working poor, seniors on fixed incomes, people with disabilities or terminal illnesses. Dogs and cat food, leashes, collars, grooming products, shampoo, the basic things that people need to keep together with their pets. There may be a disconnect. The bulk of the homeless population in the county lives right here on the streets of downtown San Diego. So people like Coco can't make it up to Encinitas. Rancho Coastal is hoping other organizations and shelters will reach out to them.
Max is never hungry. He gets half whatever I got. If I'm, you know, if there's no dog food, he gets half whatever I got. The two make ends meet. When they can't get dog food, Max gets half of Coco's dinner. If I got something, he's got something. All too often, their owners can't eat, which means dogs like Bubba have to wait. We're here, no meat in three days. Hannah Mullins, 10 News. Guys, we've been trying to help the Roberts family get in to see their home, and this is what they return to. Their garage is just completely gutted. Dave Roberts didn't even go in at first because he knew how heartbreaking it would be. My whole life is here, and I lost everything. Dave lost. Roberts lost his dream home. He built it by hand 20 years ago, and the Cocoa Fire destroyed it in one day. And to put this back together... It was really tough. He saw the damage on 10 News, and we were with him when he saw it in person. What's going through my mind? Uh, I'm, I'm just. <laughs> when the winds picked up, the flames grew so fierce, fire NATO started eating away at the hillside. Oh, God, something just. Oh, that's an explosion. Then a transformer blew, and we made a run for it. The storm was coming this way, blew the windows out. Robert stayed back trying to protect his home and help fire crews. With flare-ups all over, they faced critical decisions about who to help. I filled three trucks here with my pool water. I pumped it with those hoses that are laying over there into those trucks. And those guys said, hey, what, if the wind changes, this comes back here, we've got your back, we'll be back here. Robert says they were working hard and saved other homes, but never came back for his. First of all, just glad that I have the Lord above and my wife and my son. And if there's one little miracle, there are dozens. The one part untouched was where the animals were. About 20 goats, two chickens, and the things that matter most. Between my family and friends and relatives and uh, everybody, I'll, I'll make it somehow. Hannah Mullins, 10 News. <laughs> Four-year-old Cora was learning to love Dad from afar with air kisses. I love you, Daddy. And see you soon. See you soon. <laughs> Where's Daddy? It was the first of many times she'll ask about Master in Arms Second Class Brian Frankel. And he's gonna come down just a little. In a little while. He's headed out for a lengthy nine and a half month deployment. Halfway in, Cora will become a big sister. She's crying. It's just hard. It's hard for the families of more than 6,000 sailors. They're hitting the open waters, and the U.S. is about to show a lot of muscle. The roar of rotor blades could be heard from aircraft ready to support the USS Carl Vinson, along with four other ships. They're prepared to move where the mission takes them, which could mean the turbulent Middle East. We're going to miss them. Paul Kaszurski drove four hours and showed up five hours early to send his teenage son off. We got put on the access list a little bit too late, is what they told us. That made his already heavy heart sink a little more. A little disappointment because we can't see him off. As the morning went on, tears started to dry and little Cora was learning a tiny hug can mean a lot. And tears don't belong on her mom's face. Hannah Mullins, 10 News. Hannah? And Bill, this is one of the guns that was just handed over a few minutes ago, and two more cars have just pulled up. Don't worry, this gun is not loaded. This program, though, is put on by UAMIC, and it's a matter of keeping this community safe. The line wrapped around the lot and down the street, people looking to unload their guns. It's always been on my mind that it might get into the wrong hands. This is a good opportunity to get rid of it legally. James Retta had 12 little hands in mind of his six grandkids. They mean a lot to me it's all my life. And when you think about something like that happening here, what goes through your heart? I don't want to see it happen again. Those shots at Sandy Hook Elementary were heard across the country. The United African American Ministerial Action Council and supporters like Sheriff Bill Gore say it serves as a sobering reminder to get rid of guns people no longer want or need. And the concept is simple, turn in a gun and get a gift card, no questions asked. It's kind of illegal, so I want to get rid of it. Do you mind if I ask how you got it? Dumpster diving, it works though. 
James Pfeffer was happy to get it off his hands. Retta was happy his wouldn't fall into his grandkids. Plus, he plans to use the gift card for their Christmas presents. And you're looking at a gun out here live that has just been handed over. People can keep coming. This program will run until 1 o'clock this afternoon or until people keep coming. Now, you can get a gift card for $50 or $100, depending on the type of gun you turn in. We're live in Central San Diego, Hannah Mullins, 10 News. And Bill, last night's deadly accident was right there. We're told the train was going 52 miles an hour. Now, I had planned to show how there's not much stopping you from getting hit, and then I realized in some areas there's nothing. It's just a real, like I say, a real sad state of affairs. Jeff Clark says a 22 year old was helping his sister celebrate her birthday. Witnesses say the warning lights flashed, the crossing arm went down, and the horn sounded. She stopped. He decided to cross underneath the crossbar before the train came, and then when she stopped, he doubled back. She was right there as her brother died in one of the most grisly ways imaginable. We heard the stud, and the next thing you know, everyone's freaking out and running down to see what's going on. Screams of sheer terror rang out from the other side of the tracks where his sister was. People nearby ran to help and saw a shoe on one side of the track. They quickly realized there was nothing they could do. I probably looked about five seconds, and then after that, I'm like, you know what, I can't, I can't, I can't see this anymore. I guess the lights, the light of the train, and I guess, and he was, since he was drunk, I guess he, he got, he got in a, like in a frozen mode. There are bars all around. The concern is people can be walking out drunk, maybe even a little daring. Bottom line, at least right here, there is absolutely nothing stopping you from getting hit. Amazed that we're here with another person gone, you know, via train. One year ago, a man was seriously hurt by a train in the same spot. Two months before that, someone was thrown 20 feet in the same area but survived. A year before, a block away, a woman's body was dismembered by a train. And now this birthday nightmare. I mean, it's some mother's child right now that's, you know, that's gone. It's some sister's brother, you know, out for a good time. And I want to show you something. That safety arm will stop me from going in that direction, but it is wide open on the other side for people to walk this way. It is the same deal on the other side of the street. We're checking to see if that's enough. We're live in Carlsbad. Hannah Mullins, 10 News. Thank you, Hannah.